This desk gadget promises to dial up your productivity and reshape how you interact with your software. But there's a twist. I'll dive deeper there in a bit, but first, what is it? It's the Loop Deck Live, the middle sibling of a family of USB interfaces aimed at productivity seekers. It's a console that allows you to map software actions to touchpads, buttons, and dials to streamline your PC workflow and shave hours off your workday. It's extremely customizable and it has an infinite number of use cases. I mean, look, I'm playing Apex Legends purely using the Loop Deck. Mind you, not very well, but whether I play well with a mouse and keyboard is debatable. But it's a solid example of just how deeply you can customize this thing. My the mission of the last six years has been to discover and integrate devices that optimize my workspace productivity. Desk gadgets like this are not only incredibly useful, but there's something super satisfying about controlling your digital software with analog controls. It's immersive and it really pulls me into that work experience. The Native Instruments Machine MIDI controller was the first console that really opened my eyes to how transformative consoles can be. From selecting instruments, laying down tracks, to tweaking plugins and EQing, I could produce an entire musical piece directly on the console without ever needing to look at my monitor or use a keyboard and mouse. The Loop Deck takes that same experience and expands it to any software. Loop Deck didn't skimp on the presentation. From the outset, you're met with double box packaging, showcasing a sleek finish with a reflective green aluminum imprint of the brand name. Open the box and you're greeted with the star of the show, the Loop Deck Live console. Accompanying it are a braided and removable USB-C cable with a 90 degree connection on one end, which we love to see though it's a tad short, a USB-C to A adapter for the traditionalists, a attachable kickstand that I'll roast a bit later, and of course, the paperwork. The Loop Deck's design evokes a curious contrast, sleek and sophisticated from the front, yet some decisions on the flip side leave me scratching my head. It's compact for the number of inputs provided at 5.9 by 4.3 inches. It should fit in most desk setups, and it's perfect for traveling with your laptop. The top plate is an anodized black aluminum that has a premium finish and feel. Embedded within are a grid of 12 primary touch buttons flanked on each side by vertical touch bars. These are not physical buttons that can be depressed, rather they are virtually segmented areas on a single 4.3 inch touch capacitive screen that is divided by a plastic window grid. You can swipe horizontally across the panes to change the pages of the touch buttons and vertically to change the pages of the dials or touch bars. And it provides haptic vibrational feedback when touched. The touch bars display actions associated with the dials and offer three more touch points each. The screen has a resolution crisp enough for distinct icons and legible text. I couldn't pin down the exact specs and I'm not going to individually count the pixels here but the software suggests 80 by 80 pixels per button with some deduction that puts us at 320 by 240 for the primary button area and estimating for the grid and touch bars I'm going to suggest an approximate resolution of 480 by 270 pixels. The screen is backlit with full RGB support and is vibrant at max brightness. The backlight can be adjusted from 0% to 100% in 10% increments and yes you can assign device functions of the loop deck to itself. Viewing at an acute angle can cause some rainbow effects, though you can't see that in standard viewing conditions. However, this thing is a fingerprint magnet, and fingerprints can be seen from any angle. The grid on top makes it difficult to clean as you have to clean each pane individually and really get into the edges. Surrounding the touchscreen are six analog dials, three on each side, which offer more accuracy, precision, and consistency than, say, a mouse for adjustments. Rotation is accompanied by a tactile and satisfying click with every turn. Each dial also doubles as a pressable button. Across the bottom of the unit are eight classic buttons. The first is reserved as a home or a back button. The others, labeled one through seven, can be used for mapping actions and are RGB addressable and can be assigned a color. If you're keeping track, that is 32 buttons, six dials, and two touch bars at your fingertips. The Loop Deck's body is an industrial matte plastic with rubberized feet to ensure it stays in place. The stand, however, is where the build quality suffers. It's detachable and slots into two screw holes in the bottom of the device and then snaps onto the back. It's thin, flimsy, and doesn't quite align with the rest of the device's premium feel. It feels like it's going to snap when installing or removing it. It also lacks adjustment, so you're locked into the single height and angle it offers. The thin rubber grips on the bottom are no match for the feet on the device itself, and the device moves when touching it. They really gimped an otherwise beautiful device with that one. Ignoring its Achilles heel, the Loop Deck does impress in design and build quality. It's one of those gadgets that's an aesthetically pleasing addition to any workspace. 
Setup is incredibly easy. Simply connect the Loop Deck Live to your machine and download their app. It's compatible with both Windows 10 and Mac OS 10.13 or newer. From the install, it's already equipped with a slew of ready-to-use actions tailored for your OS. And you have the power to map typical OS functions, whether it's capturing a screenshot, firing up the search bar, accessing your clipboard, or even jumping straight into a specific folder. It's all doable with a single button press. The most obvious implementation of the Loop Deck is to assign buttons to launch particular applications. The software makes this task feel trivial. Just drag the open application action to an available slot and choose the app. From then on, tapping that button either launches the app or brings it to the foreground if it's already open. Loop Deck will auto-fetch the app icon to display on the screen, but you can provide a custom icon if preferred. And let's not forget the six dials. They can be assigned to manage your system volume, tweak screen brightness, cycle through your virtual desktops, and much more. While all of that is undeniably useful for general computer usage, the Loop Deck is capable of so much more. And once you realize the potential, you'll quickly see it's a waste to do just that. The Loop Deck family of consoles have a feature called Dynamic Mode. When it's enabled, the console detects which app you're using and auto-switches its profile with the relevant actions. It's like having a gadget that's always one step ahead of you. Loop Deck has preloaded plugins and profiles with ready-to-use settings for all the big hitters, like the Adobe Creative Suite, Ableton Live, Spotify, and OBS and Streamlabs, effectively bringing an element of plug-and-play to their device to help you hit the ground running. The Loop Deck Marketplace is packed with additional profiles, plugins, and icon packs to customize your experience. Despite its name, most of the stuff here is free. It's more like a repository than a marketplace. If you're on the fence, you can go take a peek to see all the software that the Loop Deck can currently integrate with. Where this desk gadget truly shines is in the level of customization. It requires a tinkerer's touch to really get the most out of, so you'll need to roll up your sleeves and invest some time. But trust me, a little effort now will shave hours off your future tasks. Let's break it down. Each application requires a profile to hold its specific actions. Think of these as homes for each app that you have. For example's sake, I've got a profile for DaVinci Resolve that will become active anytime I open that app. Sitting inside each profile are workspaces. Workspaces let you group actions based on what you're doing. Using DaVinci Resolve, I have separate workspaces for cutting, editing, and color grading that I can swap to depending on which stage of the process I'm in. There's no limit to how many workspaces you can have. Inside your workspaces are pages. Pages hold your actions and adjustments to control your software through the buttons and dials, and you can also create an infinite number of them. Pages are independent for buttons and dials, so you can have differing numbers of each and use swipe gestures to paginate independently. Plugins can be installed from the marketplace. Plugins are integrated to work natively with the applications for which the plugin is built. So what happens if you use an app that doesn't have a plugin in the marketplace? Well, Loop Deck has you covered. They have a bunch of general actions like mouse clicks, drags, wheel spins, rotations, and much more. For instance, if you want to to adjust a slider in some obscure app, you simply assign a mouse drag action to a dial on your deck, hover your mouse over the slider, and get precise control. And those complicated three to four key shortcuts you have to remember and juggle across 10 different apps, you can condense those into single button actions and label them in human language. You can also stack multiple shortcuts or actions into a single macro and have the loop deck fire them off with one press, either asynchronously or in a sequence with delay or intermediary actions between each step. It's also got all the basic basic functions you would imagine from a standard macro pad, like writing or pasting text, playing a sound file, executing commands, and so on. I can't dive into every nook and cranny in this video as that's a full three hour tutorial, but I will highlight a handful of potential use cases. The Loop Deck is incredibly useful for streamlining daily computing routines. You can control your sound channels with precision, mute your sound or mic in a heartbeat, swap virtual desktops, or launch most used apps and folders at the touch of a button. You can flip on smart home lights with Philips Hue and and execute advanced home assistant actions via API calls to control your entire smart home. For the increasing number of us working from home, the Loop Deck's versatility becomes even more evident, and touch controls are supported for Zoom and Microsoft Teams. The device offers limitless possibilities, whether it's efficiently navigating through project management tools like Notion, calculating your way through Excel, or blasting through emails in Outlook. You can create static or dynamic dashboards, say if you want to view the current date or week number, keep track of crypto prices, or track subscriber counts, Speaking of which, subscribe if this video has been helpful. At 1,000 subscribers, I can monetize to fund future Desk Gadget reviews. I've dedicated pages to track time zones of my team members and key project stakeholders, along with their looming deadlines. Creative professionals can streamline their entire workflow in nearly any creative application. Developers can map an array of shortcuts for IDEs, open consoles, and assign API calls to buttons. For streamers, the Loop Deck pairs perfectly with OBS, allowing precise control over your scenes and audio, and has direct integration with platforms like 
Twitch, Twitch Studio, and Streamlabs. My setup is powered by voice meter with various input channels for my microphone, Spotify sound, vinyl record player, along with multiple outputs. The loop deck allows me to route audio channels for work calls, streaming sessions, and after hour jam sessions. For all the gamers out there, the possibilities are limited only by your imagination. If you recall the start of this video, that was the loop deck replacing my mouse and keyboard to play Apex Legends. MMO players have access to a slew of new hotbar shortcuts for casting spells. For those into flight or racing sims, it's the perfect companion to map out a complete command center. Now, I've been singing the praises of the loop deck's capabilities, so I must also acknowledge the not so great side. First and foremost, the stand is laughable. I mentioned it earlier, but it's a pain point that can't be ignored. The lack of height and angle adjustments truly gimp it to a degree that I'm considering finding a tablet stand to mount it to instead. And the USB-C cable is too short. A long cable is necessary these days. In terms of software, the loop deck is lagging in its integrations. For a product that has been on the market for years, I expected a richer ecosystem, especially when compared to the integrations offered by the Elgato ecosystem. What's puzzling is the emission of dynamic display updates in the loop deck developed integrations. Take Spotify, for example. When you heart a song or change the loop settings, the loop deck doesn't reflect those actions on the face of the console. It turns into a guessing game requiring you to tab into the software to verify what state it's in. It's an oversight that third-party integrations, such as the voice meter plugin, managed to get right. On the hardware side, while the tactile experience is generally satisfying, especially the dial clicks, the haptic feedback is inconsistent. Sometimes it exists on tap, and other times it seems to take a break. It's unpredictable, and I've yet to find a logical reason or setting behind its randomness. The touch bars, which offer three additional touch points, unfortunately don't fare much better. Their responsiveness is iffy at best, often requiring multiple presses to register an action and at an offset that doesn't match the icon's physical location on the screen. While swiping gestures register well, direct touch is a bust. And then, not a flaw, but a word of caution to potential buyers, like many macro pads, the Loop Deck demands an investment of your time for customization to make it effective. Yes, Loop Deck has done an amazing job at providing out-of-the-box functionality and profiles, but if you're not willing to dive into its configurations and set it up for your personal use, there's a risk of it collecting dust on your desk. When evaluating a product like the Loop Deck Live, it's essential to factor in more than just the initial cost. By shaving mere seconds off of tasks like mouse movements, clicks and drags, or fumbling through menus that you repeat hundreds or even thousands of times a day, the time saved quickly compounds. And that's not taking into account the direct hours it has spared me during photo and video editing for content creation, streamlining my daily comms and development tasks for work, or sparing me the mental gymnastics of juggling countless shortcuts in the 30 apps I touch per day. Priced at $269, the Loop Deck Live sits in the middle of its product family, and given its impact, I can genuinely say that I'm thrilled with my purchase. It's paid for itself in hours saved in its inaugural week alone. For those of you seeking a more compact experience or a cheaper console, the Loop Deck Live S comes in at $189 and offers 15 touch buttons, 4 analog buttons, and a pair of dials. It can handle any use case of the Loop Deck Live from this review, it simply has fewer inputs. The bigger sibling, the Loop Deck CT, is priced at $559, and its top half is effectively a Loop Deck Live console, with 12 additional analog buttons and a rotary dial with an integrated color touchscreen on the bottom. Built specifically for creatives, it rivals products like the Blackmagic Speed Editor, but with the versatility to transcend applications. Hit the like button below if this video was helpful so that others can see it. If you'd like me to make a head-to-head -head video between the Loop Deck and the Stream Deck, let me know in the comments below.